Most of us have heard of famous Greek gods such as Zeus and Apollo, as well as demigods such as Heracles and Perseus, and many others from myths and legends. Well, they were the popular kids, and their stories lived on through the mouths of people for thousands of years. However, like the quiet kid in the room, there are many lesser-known Greek gods that might just be more interesting than you thought. Before we jump right into today's episode, like, share, and subscribe. The Fates These three goddesses were responsible for bestowing upon people their destinies at birth. Also known as the Moirai, the three goddesses went by the name Clotho, the Spinner, Lachesis, the Lauder, and Atropus, the Inflexible. These three titan goddesses were so powerful that even Zeus couldn't control them or change the destinies they gave people. They were often imagined as old and ugly, with each goddess having their own job to carry out. Clotho spun the thread of life, Lachesis measured the length of a person's life, and Atropus was the one to bring someone's life to an end. They were also responsible for different time periods, with Atropus looking after the past, Clotho, the present, and Lachesis, the future. The Hore This collection of goddesses represented the four seasons and looked after time and the constellations in the sky. They also guarded the gates of Olympia to make sure no ruffians made their way in. Depending on what you read, the three goddesses went by the names Thalo, Oxo, and Carpo, or were made up of the trio of Eunomia and her sisters, Dike and Irene. The Judges of Death Iacos, Minos, and Radamanthus. The Greeks had three gods, whose sole job was to judge those who had died, usually deciding upon their punishment as well. According to legend, they were originally men, but were related to Zeus. Zeus is said to have credited them with law and order on Earth while human. So, when they died, they were made demigods and allowed to preside over much of the underworld. Iokosh was supposed to be one who judged those who came from Europe, and Radamantis judged those who came from the continent of Asia. Their fellow judge Minos had the final vote in all cases. While we know that after death, they guarded Hades, there is little known about what happened during their lives on Earth. Nike Nike was the goddess of victory, so you can understand why Phil Knight settled on that for the name of his sneaker company. She has an ambiguous origin, but what is known is that she was said to have wings and is often depicted holding a victory wreath or running towards victory. There were several cults dedicated to this deity, and she was said to observe battles from the sky and choose what side would enjoy the victory. Priapus Believed to be the son of Aphrodite and Dionysus, Priapus was a minor god of ancient Greek myth. He was known as the god of fertility, livestock, fruits, and vegetables. Unfortunately, he didn't have a great time as a god. He was cursed by the god Hera with impotence and was born extremely ugly. Is that what he calls it? Due to this, he was refused entry into Mount Olympus and exiled to Earth, where he was raised by shepherds. He is often portrayed as a short, trollish man. Eos Eos was the goddess of dawn in Greek legend, who cursed Aphrodite with an insatiable lust for mortal men, resulting in her many affairs that produced an array of demigod children. That said, Eos also had a taste for mortal men and would kidnap them and force them to be her lovers. The most notable was the Trojan prince, Tithonus. Eos gave him the gift of immortality, but not eternal youth. This led to Tithonus aging without dying for an eternity. This was not a pleasant way to live, although he eventually turned into a grasshopper, so it wasn't all bad. Eos was a titan goddess and usually represented as a young woman with wings. Hypnos the god of sleep spent his days living with his brother, Thanatos, the god of death, in the underworld. Hypnos was one of the lesser-known gods who lived in a massive cave where the river Leith, meaning forgetfulness, originates. 
No light or sound entered his abode, with Hypnos enjoying the silence. He was involved in the Trojan War when the goddess Hera asked for his help. Zeus forbade all the gods and goddesses in Mount Olympia from interfering. So Hera reached out to Hypnos. She promised him a bride, Pasithea, the goddess of hallucination and relaxation. So Hypnos agreed to help. He put Zeus to sleep, enabling the Greeks to take advantage and win the war. Selene In Greek legend, Selene was the goddess of the moon. In Roman mythology, she was known as Luna. She drives a moon chariot across the skies and was known to have had many affairs with other gods and mortal men. Her most known romantic relationship was with Endymion, also known as the king of Elis. Like many of these ancient Greek characters, Endymion had a wandering eye and tried to seduce Zeus's wife, Hera. As punishment, Zeus gave him the choice of remaining mortal or being young forever. He chose to be young forever, but there was a catch. Eternal youth required Endymion to sleep forever. This ended the great love affair between Selene and Endymion. Astra Planetae the Astra Planetae are the gods of the wandering planets. Stilben is known as the sky god and presides over the wandering planet, Mercury. Eosphorus, or Phosphorus, is the god of Venus during the morning. However, Venus also has a god specifically for the evening star, known as Hesperus. The other two are Pyrois, the god of Mars, and Phaeton, the god of Jupiter who is believed to have been fathered by the great god Apollo. Legend has it that Phaeton is unsure of who sired him and believing it is the god Helios, attempts to drive his fiery chariot to prove his birthright. Unfortunately, it looks to Zeus as if he may crash and cause great harm to Earth, so Zeus destroys him with a well-placed thunderbolt. Helios this Greek god was known as the god of the sun. In Greek myth, he drove a chariot across the sky from east to west. He was the son of Hyperion and Thea, and brother of the goddess Selene and Eos. Although he was a minor god in ancient Greek mythology, his popularity grew over time in Roman mythology, where he became a major deity for a short time during the 4th century. Helios featured in a number of stories, the most notable being when he allowed his son Phaeton to drive his chariot. Helios warned him that only he was equipped to control the chariot, but Phaeton was insistent. He eventually allowed him the chance to take it for a spin, and it almost ended in disaster. Animoi The Animoi are one of the coolest sets of gods in Greek mythology. The Greeks believed that all of the winds had a distinct personality and assigned each of them a separate god. The gods Zephyrus of the West Wind, Euros of the East, Boreas of the North, and Notus of the South Wind. Sometimes in the stories, the Animoi look like men with enormous wingspan. Other times, they are shown in the form of incredible horses or breathtaking majesty. Sometimes the Animoi were represented as being controlled by Aeolus, who was known as the Horse Rainer and had ability to control the wind gods to unleash horrible storms whenever the gods wanted him to. The god Eurus, associated with the east wind, was often believed to be a sign of bad luck. Morpheus When most people hear the name Morpheus, they think of the character from The Matrix. At last. However, Morpheus is actually one of the coolest Greek gods ever. Morpheus was originally a child created by the original night goddess, Nyx. However, along with several others, he worked for the head god of sleep, Hypnos. It was said that Morpheus looked up to Hypnos as if he were his father. Morpheus was the head god of dreams and was sent as a messenger in the dreams of mortal men when the gods needed to give them important information. Some people believe that when Agamemnon had a dream with a message from Zeus himself, it was Morpheus who was sent to deliver it. So what do you think of these lesser-known Greek gods? Comment down in the section below and see you again in another episode.